Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Journeyman Project Turbo. Last time, we found ourselves in the World Science Center in Australia, and apparently we landed in what, what appears to be Dr. Elliot Sinclair's laboratory. We came in here, and apparently there was a robot right outside the door waiting to shoot us with a tranquil- with a heavy fatal dose of tranquilizer in order to get rid of us. So he knew he was coming- we were coming. So during that, we had to find an antidote, make an antidote, and now we're ready to explore the rest of the World Science Center. I still don't understand these doors, to be honest. Dr. Elliot Sinclair for your views. He will take a short break now and return to hear from the distinguished Dr. Enrique Castillo. Thank you, gentlemen, for your attention. Now, this is actually a very interesting point. If you remember why we're actually coming here, it's because Enrique Castillo, one of the speakers for this conference for the alien the alien rally and he gets assassinated for his pro alien kind of tendencies to invite aliens into our into mankind's existence in order to relate to them cooperate with them learn new things now this actually works with both of the timelines that are going the original and the one that has changed due to the temporal rip the original was about the invitation to the symbiotry of peaceful beings and whether it was a good idea or not. Now, in the alternate timeline, this timeline, Earth still received a Cerulean, um contact notice, even though it was fairly short. However, it still can, speculative, speculatively, instigate a conference such as this to whether or not it is a good idea to interact with aliens from another planet even though we know nothing about them whether it's a good idea for us whether we're going to benefit from them so that's kind of an interesting idea there now one thing we have to do is actually stop the assassination so that the that the pro alien speaker dr enrique castillo lives and no tension actually happens. So what we're actually going to do is use the trace biochip. So if you remember what the trace biochip actually did was um, trace footsteps of weird um, something that's not supposed to be here, namely me or this humanoid figure here, which is actually kind of weird. But then again, the alien, the robot actually morphed into a human. So these footprints are going to be human, not, al not alien or robot. Synthetic carbon-based alloy. So what we can do with this, these footsteps is it's coming out of the door from Elliot Sinclair's laboratory, and we can follow these footprints to where it has actually gone. Now I'm not going to do this um, immediately. I'm actually going to explore a bit what the mapping biochip's for. However, you have to keep the trace biochip up in order for the actual, um, for the actual footsteps to keep appearing. And this way is apparently to the auditorium. I might as well go there, I mean... But then again, if you remember that the ac guy actually, um, said that it was going to be a old a recess before Enrique Castillo actually starts, so there's going to be people walking around, so we and we can't actually interact with them. I'm not going to show off the death screen because it's actually the exact same one as the Mars Colony one, although they're way more in abundance here. Now some of these doors actually say something if you click on them, it's just that there's very few doors. Yeah, so you, you, it, there's many different pathways you can go here, and it's very limited. It's kind of disappointing. Dr. Flanagan can be reached after the alien contact rally. Yeah, so there's one of the things. 
This actually is way different in Pegasus Prime. I might as well point that out. There's actually a directory and a full map to this place. There's, It's actually quite expansive. Um, what other thing? Actually, the place where we're dropped in in Pegasus Prime is actually not Dr. Elliot Sinclair's office, but his laboratory. There's actually Dr. Elliot Sinclair's office in here where you can actually get a key card to his office added, added to your inventory where you can listen to some messages from other doctors who have ridiculously weird accents. I don't even know what accents they are. They're not Australian, or maybe they are Australian, but one is like a weird pseudo-German kind of thing. Yeah, this me if you whenever this thing pops up, do not go forward one step. Or you will get caught by security and death screen. Dr. Euler is on vacation. Well, that's good to know, I suppose. Another thing you can do in Pegasus Prime is actually listen to Dr. Sinclair, Dr. Ellis Sinclair, give his actual speech because he's actually on the anti-alien side of the debate, whereas Enrique Castillo is on the pro-alien side. He show he presents the actual um he presents the actual um, points for not involving ourselves with an alien race. It, while it's a debate, you gotta have, have one argument over the other. Now here's one interesting thing about the, the crowd noises. This is usually the one you always hear. However, if you go to, over to this door, this is the only screen where it's different. Very odd. Well, anyway, we might as well get going here. But yes, you actually get to hear that um, Dr. Sinclair is actually kind of anti-alien. He doesn't want to interact with aliens at all. So that's actually in something interesting in to keep in mind here. Now, Pegasus Prime also makes this place a lot more lengthy. Because, actually, we're at the end of this. If I actually go one step further, I will get caught by security. There's no warning for this hallway. You just get instantly caught, and it, it's really odd for some reason. But yes, if we were actually following the footprints, they would actually lead down this corridor and to this purple door. All the other doors were green. This one's purple. You know this is the right way to go. Now this purple door it actually leads to the end of the time period because when we open it, hey, look at who's inside! It's the it's the guy robot. Please welcome Doctor Enrique Castillo. Oh no, he's about to speak. Uh oh. Um. Also, did I mention that the announcer actually looks sounds really bored because he kind of sounds really bored um hey dude oh come on you can't step onto the catwalk really And Agent 5, this is exactly what happens when you can't step up a step. This is actually a really odd death screen in my opinion. His face just looks really contorted and... <laughs> the concentrated blast of the robot's weapon cut through your layers of defense like a warm knife through butter. He had no regrets. It's an interesting description, I have to say, but... Even look at that, like the trajectory of this laser blast is just ridiculous. Alright, I'll see you back and we'll actually f take down this robot. Also another thing I should point out is that I'm not lying. Yeah, not lying when it says that you get no warning when you go down this path. Again, you also get the same thing as you did on the Mars colony, however there are far more areas where you can get caught by security. It's it's kind of interesting. Anyway, let's deal with this robot. Please welcome Dr. 
Victor Enrique Castillo. It sounds like he just wanted to go home and have a nice drink. But now there are actually two ways we can go about dealing with the robot here, the guy. First up is the danger high voltage thing right here. We can click on it and we get an open circuit of electricity and he notices this and goes right after us. And electrify the... Yeah, we just electrified the catwalk. And... And burnt him to a crisp. And that's actually a legitimate way to take him down, which is very interesting. Central processor damaged. Self-destruct sequence initiated. Sadly, unlike Ares, he doesn't have his name on top of his helmet. Now, before I take these biochips and we'll be on our way because we saved him from assassination, I'm actually going to head back and reload, and we're actually going to do this the proper way. Okay, let's do this the proper way. First thing I want to do is actually preemptively get out the wire cutters here that we actually got from uh, the Mars colony. Please welcome Dr. Enrique Castillo. Now we had no use for these in the Mars colony, but there's definitely a reason why we have them here. And the reason is for the fire control access, we get to cut this. And we get access to the Argon anti-fire system. Um, let- Oh! What the- We don't get enough time to do it. You need to know- You- You actually need to know what you're doing. Yeah. If you hesitate for one second, you're done. Alright, be right back. Now before we go back in to actually deal with the robot, we're, uh, I might as well show you what happens when energy runs out in this area. Two, one. So this is what happens when you run out of energy in terms of, um, the World Science Center. Not only do you get caught by security, but you also get incarcerated f and, well, yeah. The temporarily displaced. Now, there isn't actually a special one for the Mars colony, so I didn't show it off. What happens when you run out of energy is either, depending on where you are, you either suffocate or you get caught by security. So you don't get, like, this special incarcerated one. All right, let's actually take care of that robot. All right, wire cutters, let's do this. So we get access to the fire control access, which is actually the Argon anti-fire system, and instantly we have to press test. Now, you may be interested to see why that actually worked. Um, if you actually watch the morphing video for Sinclair's um, files, you may have picked up the fact that argon, or an, an inert gas, actually stops the morphing process in its tracks. And because this is a morphing robot, it pretty much just shut the whole robot down. So it's kind of a roundabout way of dealing with this particular robot. Central processor damaged. Self-destruct sequence initiated. Now this is where we get some really cool biochips. Again, don't take the right center one. I'm going to start with the top left. If it'll go into my inventory. We get the shield biochip. We can't pick up this one, even though it looks completely intact. I have no idea. Like, that one's shattered, that one's cracked, but... No, that one looks completely intact. The bottom right... We get the retinal biochip. These two biochips are essential for the final time zone. This is why we couldn't really go to the uh, NORAD 6 until now. 
and the optical memory from him. Oh, look what he left behind! A nice gun! It looks like, actually it looks like a radar gun. Like a real radar, Holy, like a satellite gun. But yep, now that we've prevented his assassination, and now we are all good here! So yeah, World Science Center, actually not that long. I believe it's a, um, relatively the shortest of the three. The Mars Colony definitely being the longest because it has the most stuff packed into it. Select a destination from the listing on the left monitor. So yeah, the last one we have is NORAD 6. But first, let's take a look at what the all this cool stuff that we picked up. First up, the stun gun. I don't know how he was going to use a stun gun for assassinating Enrique Castillo. Yeah, stuns anyone within a 40-foot range with an ultrasonic neural waveform generator. Pretty cool. I wonder if we'll get a use for that. Now, in Pegasus Prime, there's also a stun gun in there. However, it's also mixed within like a shotgun, kind of laser blast kind of shotgun. The robot actually fires at you preemptively, and in Pegasus Prime you have the shield biochip early, so that's kind of where that comes in, and because he used up all his rounds on you, that's why there's only the stun gun portion of the gun left. In this one you just get a stun gun, which kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. The shield biochip pretty much just makes a shield for us so we can protect ourselves against a laser blast if that comes up, or any other dangerous environmental hazards. And the retinal biochip, which means that we can actually, if we're faced with a retinal scan, we can deceive it by producing um, whatever retinal scan that it needs in order to open the lock on a door. All of these biochips these two biochips, the retinal and the shields, will become very important when we're dealing with NORAD 6. Now last thing we have to do is look at the optical memory because we picked up one more piece of optical memory from that robot, whose name is Mercury. So let's hear from that guy, whoever he is. I clearly don't know, do you? Mercury, I'm sending you to eliminate my adversary, Enrique Castillo, who thought he was doing the world such a favor, convincing them that I was insane to fear alien contact. Well, I'm not the one. I'm not the one who's inviting death into my home. The only place I can be sure of finding him is on stage at the Alien Contact Rally eight years ago, so I'm sending you to the World Science Center in the year 2310. Try to make his death look accidental, but whether or not you succeed at that, do everything you have to to ensure his demise. Okay, if you don't know who the mastermind is right now, um... You need to go through a lot of evidence, because really, he just gave himself up. He's He was very personal in that optical memory. And really, the robot just kind of went for the lethal approach to his assassination. He didn't even try to make it accidental, he just kind of shot him. Very interesting. But yes, if you don't know who it is, I'm not going to tell you. You get to figure out that for yourself. But also, he's very paranoid at this point. He's very personal in this, like I said. He's very paranoid against aliens. He's very anti-alien. Yeah, that is it for the World Science Center. Which leaves one final, nor one final time zone. NORAD 6 in 2112, which is apparently where the time rip actually began. And why is 2185 the last one... Ah, oh boy, this game, it, it, it's 
comes up from under you and says, Hey, look at this wrong problem. See you next time, everyone, as we go to the final time period. Because we're fully prepared for it. <laughs>